Hello and welcome to More Than One Opinion. My name is Rudy Namor and my co-host Ginny Day. Thanks for joining us for another episode. Today we're going to be discussing toxic relationships. Yeah. So I'm sure you've been following us um, and seeing some quotes that have been circulating. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for a little yeah. while now, yeah. and uh, some of you have responded to that. So that's why we're kind of going to be putting this topic on the spotlight um, today. So we're going to be kicking off with Rodi and I think maybe your personal experience. I mean, look, I, I don't want to sort of uh, put in particular anyone in particular, but what I want to say is that the uh, the limelight at the moment is on such situations where you've mm -hmm. got um, uh, Johnny Depp's situation at, in court at the moment and you've got uh, Will Smith at the Oscars. Yeah. Um, but, you know, the, the what I want to do is put some highlights on what to watch out for. Um, and if you are in such a situation, whether you're a male or female, um, if you are in such a situation, what to identify that this is not healthy and this is happening to you. Yeah. Um, so a lot of the time, um, such people don't know that this is happening to them until they're sucked into it. And by the time they've sucked into it, they're basically uh, painted out by the end of it as the monster. Uh, and, um, and and that's the problem. So you could be the nicest person and someone could draw on you over time, slowly, yeah. and then paint you out to look like a horrible person because of the reacting or the reaction that you're giving. And that's only normal. I mean, I can only keep pinching you, keep pinching you, keep yeah. poking at you. Yeah. And then at the end you're like, stop it. And then you could just turn around and go in front of everyone if you want to be narcissistic and turn around and go, see, see? I can't deal with such a monster. You created this. I'm just reacting to what you've given. So uh, what we're noticing, whether, like I said, male or female, but at the moment, obviously, the limelight's yeah. on the toxic femininity mm -hmm. because a lot of people would say, but she's so small and she's so cute. How could she do that? To be honest, they're the ones that do that because a really tough person doesn't need to resort to uh, tactics such as this. Of breaking someone down. Well, manipulative tactics. Yeah. Um, you know, if I'm dominant, I'm dominant. Um, they, they, I don't need to play games with you to somehow control you. Um, it's the ones that look innocent and cute, whether it be, like I said, male or female, um, they apply such tactics and they, and you can see through all the quotes that I've been sort of putting in the series because these are exactly what you go through. Um, you know, Johnny Depp was saying uh, the other day in court that um, Amber would, uh, would greet him every day at the start of their relationship um, when he gets home by taking off his shoes and saying, you sit, I'll bring you your, uh, your red wine. And he'd be like, no, no, I, I can do this myself. She'd done that for about six months until she was on the phone and basically he took off his own shoe. She comes back and she went off at him, like went off, like feral went off to the point where it, it was like, oh, what is this? I don't understand. Like, why? It doesn't make sense. Yeah, the, why does uh, that have such a huge reaction to something? So that went along for another eight months and then the real her came out and then, you know, just as if she's going to take off her shoes, she's not even barely doing anything with him. She's becoming abusive. She's punching him in the face. She's belittling him. She's chipping away at his ego. Um, don't know why a Dior even goes with you. You're a fat old uh, man that has no talent. We're talking about Johnny Depp, the most talented actor. Like, like the most versatile yeah, actor. Yeah, yeah. Like Dior, Dior didn't even leave him, um, even though um, some of the Pirate of the Caribbean stopped his um, series because of him being a woman basher. When he even touched her, she hit him. Um, but what she painted out was that he's the monster. And most of the time, because you're a big, strong man, yeah. generally the society would paint you out that well, how could you? I mean, you're a big, strong man, six foot plus. How could a little five foot five girl that's petite do that to you? Or again, how could a man do that to you? And he sounds so good when he's sitting yeah. with us. You yeah. know, he doesn't say anything. He doesn't need to say anything. She doesn't need to say anything. It's the stuff that's happening behind, behind closed, closed doors. doors correct. That yeah. So I experienced such that. I was smothered like that. They would take off my shoes. I'm like, I can take off my own shoes. No, but what happens is it's not about the taking off the shoes. It's to basically smother you, overwhelm you with so much fake love and 
emotions and, and, and what have you, to the point where you're like, wow, this is who I want. Then they just take it away in one go. And this is the narcissistic most biggest point that they basically use is they overwhelm the um, their partner mm -hmm. with so much love, yeah. so much emotions, and pouring out that that person doesn't know how to process it, and thinking this is the luckiest uh, thing that I've, I've never had something like this is perfect, and then in one go stop, stop in one go, and when they stop in one go, what happens is basically that person that is receiving that will say, what did I do wrong? How did I, uh, you know, what, what did I do wrong? Did I, did I not, um, did I, did I you know, stuff up somehow? Did I, um, you know, what did I do? If that's the case, what's the situation in terms of um, how do I fix this? How do I do um, what I was receiving from before? That person now, the narcissist, will breadcrumb and slowly throw things at you, slowly, to keep you going, but then taking back to keep you controlled. Yeah. So what happens is the person that was receiving it initially is um, is like is a wreck. Yeah. Uh, they don't know what's happening now. Um, and then they'll start to chip away at your ego, at your character, at everything. At your um, confidence. At everything, everything. Yeah. Anytime they'll yeah. get a chance, they'll um, they'll knock down anything that's good about you in front of others, um, disrespect you all the time. You'll never feel that um, you're good enough. So you'll always be trying to chase their affection that you had so much had, yeah. and their uh, their uh, tick of approval for them to approve you of anything so you could turn yourself around you could come into the relationship sorry i'm talking about a guy now but you can say it as a girl too. yeah come in with a six-pack she could turn you into a fatso you could turn your life all the way back around and have your six-pack again and be very appealing again and she would still say but you're a little bit fat you've got a little bit of and she, just to chip away from anything you've achieved. So that is the narcissist. My friend, if you're seeing this in your relationship, <laughs> run, um, there's, run, there's no run. other way. There's actually, there's no psychologist can actually tell you how to fix this. No psychologist can tell you because it's, you can't fix someone yeah. that takes pleasure in doing these things. See, that's their uh, aphrodisiac. That's what they, keeps them going they get excited They're to do that it's, it's that. a control yeah right so yeah. They'll, they'll they'll you know the list goes on you just got to watch the series of all the, uh, the quotes yeah. are having yeah because the quotes can show a glimpse of what the narcissist actually is and the narcissist takes pleasure in doing this yeah so why would they want to take away their own pleasure why would they stop that right yeah. so um so most psychologists will say to you look there's nothing you can actually do because that's what they take um, uh, pleasure in doing to you. Really, you're gonna leave. Right? So that's the only solution. Yeah. Um, you know, we can do another uh, uh, series or another episode about um, what to look for in a partner. Yeah. But, um, and what not to look what, for. What, what to look or, for and, I guess and what the to warning, accept. The warning signs. Well, not to accept, like these are yeah. the red flags. Um, yeah. But the narcissist, um, again, male, female, parents, brother, sister, friends, uh, that's what to watch out for. Um, unfortunately, the worst one would be is that that's your spouse yeah, because you are building a relationship with yeah. them. You're basically, um, uh, uh, you know, you're, you're growing together and you're trying to look for the future together for many years, hopefully to the day you die, right? So that's a that's the worst one. Yeah. Um, you know, a friendship. Well, you know what? If that person is uh, is a narcissist and they're manipulating you, well then. Really, you can cut that off, and there's really quite easily. Quite easily. Yeah. Um, even even families, um, you can cut them off if they're doing that to you. Also, quite easily. The biggest one is that um, the spouse, because now you're tied in with maybe kids, financial um, uh, commitments, um, assets, whatever. Um, all these things are basically connected, and that's why a lot of these people don't leave. Yeah. They just cop it. Yeah. Um, they even live in different bedrooms. Um, they're punished uh, uh, by uh, being deprived from sexual um, intimacy, from touch, from uh, affection, from any love, um, and they don't know why they're being punished, and they don't know why this is happening. 
it's basically a control it's strategy. Right, you're right, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So this is yeah. this is all I can say that yeah. know, I can talk for, yeah. for hours about this. Uh, yeah, you're because, right. Because sorry, I did experience this uh, personally, yeah. and um, it had depressed me to the point where I actually wanted to commit suicide. I wanted to kill myself from it because I didn't know what I did wrong. Um, to how, that. How, 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 what, why did I think you know from having presents as you wake up at night? Layered all the way because she knows you're going to go to the toilet. She'll have all your presents, your birthday presents, all the way. You're going to trip over your own presents, thinking, "Wow!" Right? To not even acknowledging you at your own birthday. Um, actually, at your own birthday, he or she, in most things, will knock you. People will speak highly of you if you've achieved things. They will turn around and say, "No, nah, they snore at night. Everybody snores." Um, oh, they got white hair on the side here anything after 30 is pretty much you're going to get yeah. right here. Yeah. What are you trying to get her? Just to try to chip at you, just to try to take a punt at you, just to get a reaction from you that you that, that why are you doing this? To say to everyone, look, look, that's why I do what I do because he's a monster or she's a monster. So it's the, uh, they call it baiting. So you're baiting the person. You bait them from behind the scene. The reaction that you had from Will Smith is a baited man. A I think man so, I agree. That's, that's for a long, long, long yeah. time. So, yeah. you know, he, he came out and did what he did because it's like, can I win your approval again? Can, can Like, I'm, I'm trying to defend your honor. She doesn't care. She doesn't care. She doesn't even love you. She, she, you're there just because that's all she can have right now. Otherwise, she would go with other people. That's all she wants. She even said, if Tupac was alive, I'd want to be with him. His own daughter was writing letters and saying, I wish you were alive, Tupac, because mum and me would be so much happier. How? How? Okay, I definitely you know miss I mean? that in yeah. the how, uh, how, media. How would you be, uh, wow, really? How, wow. how would you be happier if mum isn't saying these things to you when you're sitting at, uh, on your bedtime stories, if mum's not talking in your ear and telling you these things? So, why? why? What, so leave the guy. Why are you doing that? Why would they leave? Gee, why would a narcissist that has the ultimate control over you now leave. They I actually did not leave. pick her to be a narcissist. Because like, she's that was this a bit tall? Of a, no, not because of the other, not other sides. Like, just because <laughs> of the way they portrayed their relationship no. in public. Yeah. You know, like they said, they're so spiritual. Like, they're on a spiritual journey together. They do all these things together. Like, you know, and um, mm. like they have an open relationship and no. that's what Will Smith wanted. No. You know, like, I don't know. Just, you didn't want any of that. You just don't know, right? Like, Look, what? You didn't want any of that. Yeah. She, she basically... Uh, uh, came up with all these things because and he did what he can to not lose her so th this is all again the narcissistic traits and the list can go on yeah of the a narcissist may not even know that they're a narcissist they just know that they take pleasure in controlling the partner yeah and so they, 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 they like yeah that, right so they don't go out of their way to say i just want to be evil and i want to scheme they just do that yeah. So they just do that and think, well, yeah, well, why not? Well, I, I should be in control. Why should I let him or her be in control? So it's it's there's no equal um, uh, rights in this relationship. Yeah. There's no there's no equal talk. There's no equal communication. It's you do what I tell you to do, and if you don't, I'm going to withhold everything that I smothered you with initially, and you're going to seek my approval. You're going to seek my affection. You're going to seek my um, touch for the rest of our lives and I'll breadcrumb them to you over time. And the second you complain, I'll paint you out in front of everyone that you're the monster. To the kids, to our families, to our friends, always. So that you literally become the person that I want to control all the time. And when you better yourself and you try to get out of this, I'll belittle you consistently. And that's what they'll do. So just so our viewers know, obviously you got out of this situation on mm. the other side. Yeah. What was your breaking point? Look, there was lots of breaking points. Um, but what was like, point... I guess, like that final nail in the coffin that was like, enough is enough. I need to like get out of this situation. Look, um, I don't want to talk about personal exactly no, stories. No, but, but like, what was um, it inside of you but that I, um, I, um, I had just spent a lot of money um, on them um, to do a surgery. And I went out of my way for everything, even the hotel afterwards, and the kids don't know and everything. Okay, um, and um, stayed um, in a hotel in Double Bay and everything, so that we can not let the kids see what they done. Getting home that night, we're driving home that night. Um, she turns around and says, "You don't clean your cupboard." I don't clean my cupboard. 
I work six days a week. You don't work. I've got a cleaner that comes twice a week. Used to live with us for eight months. What, what, what do you mean? Why don't you clean it for me? No, I'm not touching it. You do it yourself. I said, you are the most ungrateful person I've ever seen. You just want to somehow discredit what we just done this week and how much money we just spent on you. So you turn this around and do the, I've had enough, it's enough. So that was literally the feather that broke the camel's back. That's it. Like, I just could not turn back from that. Shortly after, uh, a month after, um, I had my birthday. At my own birthday, my brother and my sister, my brother-in-law, my brother, sorry, my brother-in-law, my sister and my friends left towards um, halfway through because they could not bear what she was saying about me. Whenever I was saying, oh, let's say um, what our experience with Rodi and everyone's saying good things, obviously it's your birthday. That's Even right, if it's like, of course. Um, she turns around and says, nah, he snores at night. Okay? Okay. Um, and they all looked at her like, we all snore. I don't give him a big head. It's his birthday. Like, the whole night she's just trying to chip away from, and I just went, you are the most wicked person I've ever, I've never spoken badly ever about you. I'm reluctant to even speak badly about you, what you've done to me now. I don't even want to bring your name up. How could you do that? And I just said, it's enough, right? And then when they thought, when that person thinks they lose control, they'll do everything that they used to try to do at the start of the relationship mm -hmm. to try to get you back. And let you again. And you're like, no, there's nothing you could do. There's nothing you could do that would keep me here. I don't want anything. I just want to leave. So, um, and that will go on for a while. And that's why I've said two different series. Yeah. I've said the manipulative um, yeah. uh, partner or the uh, narcissistic ma uh, partner and the ex-narcissistic partner. Yeah. Because the ex-narcissistic partner is the one that will do anything to try to get you back, to try to gain back their control. And I said even the stages of how they would actually do that. Um, and I didn't need a book. I don't need to hear any of these stories. This you happened, lived it. Uh, this happened to me. Yeah. And like I said, if that partner or that narcissistic person hears these, they'll be like, we don't know what you're talking about. Oh, you know what I'm talking they're about. They're in denial. They're delusional. Oh, you know exactly what I'm talking they're about. They're delusional. Yeah. 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 They, they know exactly what they're talking about. They know exactly how they paint you in front of others. They know exactly what they did to you over the years and chipped away at things like, don't worry about me. I'm a nobody. But Johnny Depp's not a good actor. Johnny Depp doesn't have style, doesn't have, what, yeah. what, 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 really? Like, he made you, you were nothing. You didn't even have any any um, uh, shows. He got you Aquaman. He got you a thing. Like, wh what are you talking about? Um, but that's what it is. It's because they don't even want to say thank you. They don't want to even um, acknowledge that you've done anything good because if they do that, that means they have to acknowledge you, that you're a good person and that they should be treating you differently. Yeah. But they don't want to. I think at that level, the ego is on a it's whole totally new different. level. Totally different. Yeah. Um, look, it's and, and that's basically yeah. a, a little glimpse, I guess, of yeah. what you should be looking yeah. for. Um, you know, and if you you're in denial yourself, like, no, I'm not getting treated that way. If these things that I've just listed slightly are pretty much what your partner is. I'm sorry, but there's no other actual way. You need to leave. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's no other way. They will do this to the rest of your life, and 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 more. It will just get worse and worse, um, and you'll be those uh, grumpy old people that um, wanted to get out of a uh, a marriage yeah. that was like this, but never had the option. Um, and literally, you'll just cry yourself to bed every night for the rest of your life until you die. Yeah. Mm. I think like break out of that codependency like cycle. Like it's not healthy. Like you said, they. Very you know, overshadow you with affection at the beginning just so you want to crave that, you know what I mean? And mm. then they rip that mm -hmm. from you and you're forever chasing that feeling again. Th that's so, the classic uh, yeah. narcissistic control uh, methodology. So this, this style of um, try to overwhelm you and then take back, that's what you do. Yeah. Um, and that's a manipulative um, uh, tactic that is used quite commonly from the narcissist. Like that's what they use. This is their tricks of the trade. This is their tools. Um, and it's it's step by step. It, it works exactly like that. And in every story, you can hear someone else's story and it's like, are they, are they reading out my story? Yeah. Um, yeah. So um, that's exactly what it is. So um, that's what 
that's all I could sort of share with um, this yeah, small segment. Of course. Um, hopefully that uh, shed some light on some things. No, I mean obviously this is a quite a personal story and experience mm. for you, and it does take a lot of courage to, you know, share that publicly because you know it, it's it is a, a sore spot like having lived that you know for so many years and having taken you to a dark place mm -hmm. but now you've like come out of it you're thriving Thank you know God. what i mean you're Thank at God. yeah you're living your best life mm -hmm. and you know, you're proof that you can you can come out of that situation Look, thank god i'm not i'm not complaining about anything but um it's it's, there, there's red no, flags. It still hurts the you, yeah, there's course. red flags, and people around you see that. Yeah. Um, and you stay in denial, and you don't want to see that. Um, I lost all my friends. Uh, my own family didn't want, at the time, to, for me to go through with this relationship. Um, but I went against everyone because I was right at 22, and they were wrong. Um, how are you going to be right? Like, what do you know at that age? Yeah. What have you seen? Yeah. What, have you been manipulated properly? Have you even seen anything? What do you know? So um, that's the truth. Um, I'm not saying again they don't have good qualities. Of course, everyone has good qualities. Of course. Um, but no one should have to experience this kind of uh, uh, abuse. I agree. Um, no one has to experience this kind of uh, manipulation. There's just no, no one needs to do that. that. That person can be the most beautiful person on earth visually to see them and appearance wise but all that wears off it's how you get treated yeah right so um so a lot of people get caught up but he's so handsome she's so pretty um you know uh, whatever surely things will work itself out they won't work themselves out if they are this particular person that's what they are they're not going to change yeah um until they control you and once you're controlled you'll be broken you're a broken vessel basically and you'll continue to be a broken vessel. You'll be, you won't be productive in anything that you do because you're broken. You're, you're just broken. Yeah. Thank you so mm. much for My sharing pleasure. that, Rodi. And um, uh, hopefully that was helpful for you. If you're in a situation like that, um, you know, please reach out, male, female, doesn't matter. I think you know both parties can experience something sure. like this. Mm. So you don't feel like you're alone and um, you don't have support. Um, I think a lot more people are speaking out about um, this kind of, of know, issue. Is, yeah. So sure. you need to like choose yourself, choose your sanity and your well-being um, all the way. So yes. thanks so much for joining Thank us. You. Like, subscribe and follow. Bye.